Okay, so um, the um, so you guys have um, what is happening here? Oh, it's not. Yeah, so you have the assignment uh, for the shift, and um, then I'm going to soon assign the homework. You know, once we finish a couple of more lectures. The other thing is that uh, we will have a makeup class next Wednesday. You know, I'm going to be on travel uh, following next uh, next week, uh, so we'll have uh, one makeup class on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, the, the same room as we have been having, um, and uh, then there'll be a session. Um, I told you the date um, um, by. Birkin about the if you have any questions on the SIFT, um, which was on what was October, I think October fourth. We will we will make an announcement about that. So um, we will um, we talked about last time about the motion models, and uh, motion model the idea is that we want to um, come up with the transformations. To relate two images from a video, um, video captures the the motion. It, motion can be of camera, can be objects, and so on. And um, of course, the motion is happening 3D. So we started with 3D rigid motion, which involves 3D rotation, 3D translation. Then we want to look at what's happening in the image. Uh, and these are two main models: orthographic projection, just simpler model. Uh, and the perspective projection, which is more realistic, but it has non-linearity because we have the depth z in the denominator. Um, then we also assume that if the scene is, yeah, it's the, we we assume that if the scene is planar, uh, which means that it gives you a constraint about the depth, then then we can come up with a better model and simpler model. And we talk about these different transformations. So simplex is a translation in the image from one image to other image. The rotation, the rigid um, transformation would consist of both the rotation and the translation. And the rotation is only in the z-axis in the image plane. And other rotations are not, not considered here. And the affine, which captures all these three and more, the stretching, the um, those kind of uh, scaling and so on. And then homography um, uh, is the more general case of the fine, which has these eight parameters. The fine has six parameters, and the homography has eight parameters. Now, the problem with the homography is that it's a, it's a uh, numerator and denominator, so we'll have some difficulty. We'll talk about that. Um, and then there's the approximation of the homography, uh, the pseudo perspective which we get from the Taylor series approximation and um, so on. So today we're going to talk about that given these transformation, how we can write a computer program to estimate these transformations. Okay, so it will be two images and we want to find these transformations. So this is also, this transformation is also called a global flow. So we talked about local flow, like optical flow. Every pixel we find out what's a motion in X and Y. Now this global flow is it in, in a way tells you what's a motion globally from one image to other image. And it, it is also called parametric flow that will get equations and we can substitute any pixel, we'll get the, get the optical flow. So, um, we are going to estimate this mo um, uh, motion from these two images. We'll use uh, all the pixels in the image. That's why it's called global. And um, uh, it's called parametric because we have the equation of this transformation. And um, we'll do the fine, we'll talk about projective or homography. And global motion, uh, once we have, it can be used in lots of uh, different tasks. So, one is that we can remove the camera motion or ego motion. Ego is a self. When the camera is moving and the objects are moving, then becomes pretty confusing to analyze those images. So therefore, if we can remove that camera motion or ego motion, then it becomes easier. We can focus on the object's motion. So this is called motion compensation or ego motion. 
and that will uh, if we can do this estimation will help us and then we can also do the segmentation uh, because if you want to segment the objects which are moving in the video now if the camera is also moving so then everything is moving so we won't be able to distinguish between the objects moving and not moving because the camera is moving but if we get rid of the camera motion then we can only focus on the object motion okay and of course we can take different images and stitch them together and make a big mosaic as I showed you before so uh, the contents of this lecture are that we will start with uh, a pretty popular method called Bergen et al method and uh, that deals with the fine transformation then we will talk about main and Picard method which will look into actually the homography the projective transformation so um, in that we will have you know different uh, version of this and uh, we will actually also look into the approximation of homography which will be the the pseudo perspective and that will be more accurate as compared to the weighted um, projective transformation we can talk about that and then another approximation of this uh, homography will be bilinear now uh, one other thing we will we will talk about today is this notion of warping image warping that once you can estimate this transformation between two images then you can apply the transformation to this image then it should look like the other image because that's the idea and we'll talk about how we can warp an image warping image means you know we'll take one image and, and transform it uh, and that transformation will be one of those fine homography and sort of perspective and so on so then we'll talk about a little bit about applications okay mosaics and coco system which we have which kind of surveillance system for the UAV video where the UAV is moving and the objects are moving so in that also we need to really get rid of the camera motion or ego motion okay so this method uh, is actually pretty simple um, and so we have two images image at time t and image at time t minus one um, which is shown here and we can you know impose these coordinate system we can say zero zero x is zero y is zero and x is one y is one you know we can have these coordinate system between zero zero to one one and then we have at image t minus one which is like that so the what we have we have a point here x y and um, in this image it was here and in this image it's here and this coordinates called x prime y prime and we are going to assume that the optical flow between two these two images is given by a fine transformation so this is a fine transformation is familiar with you it has the a1 b4 and then b1 b2 which is like a translation so this is like an instantaneous model that so given the location of the pixel in the image at t then we can find our optical flow for that pixel that where does this pixel go in the previous frame or the next frame so then you know we can always use this approximation the optical flow is a difference between the location in the t frame and t minus one frame so um, so that's fine and um, now what we are going to, and this is another way to write it down the matrix the a matrix and the b vector b vector is translation a is capture rotation scaling and other things so um, what these guys did is say well let's look at this transformation and write it down like this in a matrix and vector form so on the left side we have uv which is our optical flow at, a, at point x y and on the right side we have this matrix which we'll call x uppercase x and which has these small x small y small x small y and so on and these are the unknowns of the transformation the six unknowns of the transformation so if you take this and multiply with first row you will get a1x plus a2y plus b1 and all these will be zero that will be first equation if you take this one multiply with second row there will be zero this will be zero zero and then it will become a3x a4y plus b2 which is this one so the same thing we just wrote in the matrix form okay and um, so we will use that the left one we'll call the u bold u vector and the right one the x uppercase x bold matrix and the and the 
vector, which is 6 by 1 vector, as the uh, upper and the lowercase bold uh, A vector. So as you see the X matrix, we have 2 by 6, 2 rows and, and 6 columns. Okay, so now what we want to do is, um, given two images, we want to estimate the affine transformation. So we are going to use this optical flow constant equation, which we have used a lot in optical flow. And this is true for every point x, y. So now, since we are going to use all the pixel in the image, that's why it's called global flow. So we are going to estimate the motion so that it is satisfy all the pixel in the image. So that's why we have this summation that this optical flow constant equation is to set by pixel 1, pixel 2, pixel 3, all of them. And then we also know that u is given by this. So we are approximating, we are saying that u, the motion, is given by this affine transformation. And we are going to use this notation for fx, which will be a vector, the gradient in x and y. Okay? So therefore, now in this one, if you put instead of u, we'll kind of put this one. So that's the way we have defined optical flow. So which is x matrix and the a matrix. And this x matrix we will have for every point x, y. As you saw there, we'll have a 2 by 6 matrix and it involves x, y. So if you change the x, y, then we'll have different x matrix and so on. So which is good. So we want to estimate the u or we want to estimate the a, which is which actually define the um, affine motion, because that is the six parameters which define the affine transformation, by using all the pixel information. And the pixel information we are going to use is the spatial and temporal gradient. So this is your fx vector, which is the spatial gradient, and this ft is a temporal gradient, temporal derivative. Yes. Sorry, how do you get the so that's what we are going to estimate. So that's that's you know that's unknown right now. So so in this one, uh, we we can compute this from the images. We can compute this fx from images, and x is just the coordinates of the image, which we know, but we don't know a. So we want to minimize this function to estimate a. That's the point. Okay, and we want to minimize such that that every pixel we satisfy this optical flow constraint equation. That's a fundamental equation which we have been using again and again. And, and again, this is like a least square fit because we want to, we will estimate this uh, uh, A, um, but it will not maybe exactly correct. If it is exactly correct, this whole thing will be zero. Yeah, that's what this says. But it is approximate, so it will be a small number, positive or negative, there will be error, so we will square the error and we want to minimize the sum of a square error for all the pixels. So that's the idea, that's the least square fit. So that is what we did, that we took the u and we introduced this affine transformation here. That's the key point here, which is shown in red. Now this is true also uh, for <clears throat> the case where we are going to estimate this A uh, vector, which is a six parameter vector, iteratively, uh, which means that we'll start some initial estimate of A. Uh, somebody can tell us, or some, you can assume all translation zero, the rotation is identity, there's no rotation, so on. So we'll start with the initial estimate of A, then we will do this and find the small change in A, the delta A that how much change we make in A so that this is satisfied and we we'll keep doing that. So that's the main point here that we are going to do this iteratively. And so therefore if this is true for A, this is also true for delta A you know, because we want to look at that small change. Okay, so that's good. Then given this, now we want to minimize this. We want to find this delta A so that this function is minimized. And whenever you have function to minimize, you what you do? You differentiate the function. You differentiate the function, you go to zero, you can find delta A, okay? So that'll be a homework problem. You will do at home and you will show 
that delta A can be computed using this system, linear system. Yes. Minimize the function in x? Function in delta A. We can see that here we want to find out delta A. In this one, delta A is unknown. So we differentiate this with respect to delta A and equal to zero, and you will show that this results in this one. Okay? So so then it's very pretty simple because you know this whole function if you differentiate it between two and this thing, then you differentiate inside one, this is constant with us with delta A, this is has this thing and it'll come and it's, it's not that hard. Okay, so now we come up with this ex this linear system. So if you look at this, x as you remember was two by six matrix. So x transpose will be six by two. Yes? Uh, no, I mean x was 2 by 6 and yeah, that's right, x will be 2 by 6. So x transpose is 2 by 6 and then this one fx um, was the 2 by 1 and this is x tra uh, fx transpose is 1 by 2. So this will become the 2 by 2 and then this x, trans x is the 2 by 6. So you take the 6 by 2, 2 by 2, and um, 2 by 6, this whole thing will become 6 by 6. This is the matrix, okay? So you can matrix, vector, matrix, you know, all these you can figure it out. So this whole thing will become 6 by 6 matrix. Now this matrix we have for every pixel, okay? Because every pixel we can compute fx, and every pixel we have this x matrix, two rows their x and y coordinate. So so this is a 6 by 6 matrix and we'll have 6 by 6 matrix for every pixel we add up of. There can be a million of these matrices. If you have a million pixel, then if you take million, million matrices, add them together, you will get one matrix. Again, 6 by 6. So that's good. And this is 6 by 1 vector. And then Lala looks at this one. So x transpose again is 6 by 2. Okay, and then this one is uh, <coughs> uh, this one is um, uh, one by two. Is that right? Six by two, and this is two by one, and this will become six by two, and this is this is uh, one, so it will become six by one. So that's a vector here, six by one. This is six by one. This is six by six. So it's a linear system we can find the solution. Six unknowns, six uh, kind of rows in this thing, we can find find the solution and that is what we are going to say. So we'll call this whole thing as a big matrix A, which is six by six. Delta A or A is the six by one. This B whole thing is six by one. So that's that's the solution. So which is which is you know pretty pretty easy. So now, so basic components of this algorithm are that we are going to do again pyramid because see, the reason we talk about pyramid is going to play a very important role because whenever you have motion, larger motion, then we have to use pyramid. Otherwise, we cannot compute this motion. So we'll have pyramid construction. We'll estimate the motion at that level of pyramid. We will do the warping and we will do this in a course to find refinement fashion as we have been talking about. So let's say we have two images, image H and image I, and we are going to build this pyramid like that, okay, and be Gaussian pyramid. So we have these different levels of pyramid, on the left and on the right. Then if you know that the displacement or motion at the lowest level of pyramid is 10 pixel, next level will be 5, next level will be 2.5, next level will be 1.25, it's decreasing by half, you know, we have to talk about, that's the whole idea of pyramid. So which means what we are going to do that we will compute the global flow iteratively. We'll compute the flow at the highest level and this is small so we can compute using these masks. Then we are going to um, propagate that and apply that flow and using a warping and upsampling and then we'll compute the global flow at this level. It's very similar to as Lucas Knasse we did for the optical flow. It's very similar for global flow. And then we will keep growing like that. So this is another uh, figure which again explains. 
So in order to compute this global motion, we have two images, image at t minus 1, image at t, uh, t. So we'll first is we'll compute the Gaussian pyramid like this. And uh, as you know that the Gaussian pyramid is computed, that we apply this mask and then down sample it, we get this one. Then the next level, we apply the mask and down sample it. And that's the same thing we are going to do with the second image like this. Now we are at the high level here. So we, our aim is to estimate this A, uh, these unknown, the six parameters. So let's say we have some initial estimate that what is the, those values of those six parameters. If you don't have, we will save our translation zero and the rotation identity, there's no rotation. So we can select those. Uh, uh, A's will be 1001 zero, zero, one, and B1, B2 will be 0, 0. But if, you know, if somehow we know the initial estimate, we can use that. So what we are going to do, we will take this initial estimate, apply this to, you know, to this image at this level, which means we'll transform this image, apply that, we will we'll take, we'll change, you know, we'll move every pixel depending on that affine transformation because that's the whole idea of the transformation. It tells you given x, y, I can find out x prime, y prime. So I'm going to take x, y from here and uh, then I will transform that x, y to x prime, y prime based on my affine transformation and copy the gray level, whatever there. I'll take a next pixel, transform it x prime, y prime and copy the gray level. That's called warping essentially, okay? So we will get the transform version of this image here. Then we are going to compute the, the motion, the change in motion delta, which we describe the linear system. So we'll, we have these two images, same size. We'll compute the special number derivative. We'll go through the linear system. We'll find out what is the change. So we'll take that change. We'll add up to what we have here. Then we will use this thing to uh, apply it to this level of pyramid, which means we will apply again warping using this parameter. We'll get a warped image, which is here, which is already transformed. It already have that motion, which we estimated from the higher level. Then we have these two, and we will estimate any change, any residual residual motion, which we have not been able to capture before. So it will give us some delta, and we'll take the delta add up here. And we come to this level, again we apply that to this one, we get a warp image, and then we'll do one more level. Again, apply the same method of linear system, estimate those six parameters, and take that one, add it up, and that's the solution. Okay, so it's pretty pretty sim similar to what we did in optical slope, and it is pretty, you know, pretty, pretty uh, you know, um, uh, easy to understand because we know the notion of pyramid and uh, we are going to propagate these cores to refine, cores to fine fashion. We are going to propagate these these parameters. Okay, so so this you know give you uh, more explanation here, and we have image at t, and then we have at image at t plus one. So what we are going to do that this linear system we have that uh, is the like this and this is what we want to estimate this is known and this is known so we will whatever we compute a we are going to warp this we are going to change this image so that ultimately this image should look like this because you know, that's the whole idea so now if you look at this one if you go through you compare these images the first, you know, the image at t plus one and warped image uh, at t, then it's a it's not actually aligned. It's not, you know, same. It, 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 it is different because you know this line here is a chair, but you know there's no chair here and so on. So the idea is that we want to find our transformation gradually, so that you know when we draw a line, they are actually aligned. And that's ca also called alignment, that we want to align that. What's the alignment between this frame with respect to the other frame, okay? So we will do this iteration, and uh, we will warp by A, and uh, then this image will start to look similar to the image at the top. We'll keep doing that, and that's the same process. 
they will estimate, we will um, um, warp it and um, then you can see that using this at the end it's becoming, it's moving you know to the right side and uh, it's going to become closer to closer to that image what we are trying to do. So that that is the at the end we are going to stop here. So it is um, in iteration fashion and we keep improving and find out what's the change we need to do alignment uh, so that we can get there. So simply you know if, if, if there's nothing else it's a translation. So fine captures rotation, translation, scaling, everything. But let's say it's only translation. So we estimated, you know, at the high level with some translation, we translate that. But that's still it's not enough. So we we went through the process, we say, well, oh, there's a residual translation, we need to apply more, apply more. And when they are very similar, then the error will be small and we we will not get any other translation. So that's the idea. Okay, so um, so now let's uh, talk a little bit about the warping, uh, and, and you know I show you visually what um, warping is doing. Essentially, it's you know taking one image, converting to another image, and the way we convert is that we are going to use this transformation. So, and it's a very important notion in in image processing, computer vision, graphics, and you know you need to be uh, very comfortable with that, and it's, it's not that hard. It's pretty simple. Uh, but the basic idea is that we have uh, image F, and we want to warp image F into edge using some transformation G. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so that involves that this transformation G essentially will take a pixel located x y and transform to new location x prime y prime. That's what all these transformations are. The rotation, translation, scaling, and affine, and all those things. Okay? So then the warping will be that we will take the, um, <coughs> the, the pixel x, y in f, and uh, we will uh, <coughs> transform it you know using this function g and then we will copy in h um, the the new image warp image will be the same gray level which we have at the location x y so we take a location x y we get a new location x prime y prime and at that location and that, that way the location is determined using one of the transformation. Then we just copy that gray level to that pixel. And we do this for every pixel and that's warp image. So therefore the main idea is that what is the transformation? Once you know transformation is just a, you know just copying. So for example if the transformation are fine then we will take the x y, find x prime and then we will just take the in the new image we will at that x prime location we'll copy the um, value of the uh, image f in in that place and that will become image h so and, and as we have been talking about there are these two models of transformation one is the displacement model where we relate x with x prime okay so x is the in first frame and x prime is next frame or previous frame the other is a fine transformation to find the optical flow is a fine transformation is x, y, and, and, and they are related. So, so you know, you need to kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so um, then the image warping uh, in, in this method will be that while we have the image at time t, um, and we have an image at time t minus 1. And we are going to distinguish, you know, x in the first in the in the time t will say x, in the t minus one will say x prime. That that's what we have been doing. So what we want to do, we want to change this image. We want to warp this image, and so that this image look like this. That's the idea, okay? And we will call this just to not to confuse this with that. We'll call this x double prime. 
Okay, so we'll get a transform image of this, which we'll call x f x double prime t minus one, and this essentially should look very similar to this, because it's just we find alignment, we find what's you know how much has changed, and we make it similar to that. So now, if you look at this equation of this transformation, so we have x prime is given by x minus u which is optical flow, and that's optical flow is defined, the difference between displacement in x and x prime. And we are saying, well, optical flow is a fine, which is x plus p, so we just put in here. So then we can simplify this, we can take x common here, and this will become identity here, which is here, then a, x common, x outside, this will become minus p. So x prime is given by identity minus a, x minus p. So then we can call this identity minus a is a prime, you know, some other matrix. So that is what we have. So now um, the, we can bring this b on the other side and um, this become like that and we can actually get the a prime inverse. So all that it's saying that now this was saying if you know x, we can find x prime. This is saying if you know x prime, we can find x. It's just a rearranging of terms, okay? So, um, so just to, not to confuse, because we are going to change this, and we're going to change it so it just look like that. So it's x prime should look like x. But, but to distinguish this, which is the warp version of this, we are going to use another notation called x double prime. You know, same thing here, but just say x double prime. Okay, so, so then, um, I mean, you know, what will be the simple way to do this? What we are going to do, we will go through each pixel here. So for which we know the um, <coughs> the uh, coordinate of each of the pixel, and that is x prime, and then small x prime, small y prime. So we put in here, and we know the fine transformation already given. So we find out a new location, x double prime, in this image. And once we know x double prime, we go to x double prime location here, we just copy that intensity here. We go to the next pixel here, and then again plug in, in this one, which is x prime, and get x double prime, go to the x double prime location, and copy the intensity there. Copy the, we will have loop, we'll do all that, okay? So that is a warping. So it's not, you know, really, really big thing. It is just knowing the transformation we want to find a new location of each pixel using the transformation, then we want to copy the intensity or color of that pixel in this frame to this frame. That's it. Okay, so that is nice. And uh, now there is um, <clears throat> one problem. Now the problem is that um, when we did this thing, when we found the x double prime which is here, now that x double prime may not be an integer value. We may get x double prime which will be 3.9 and 2.7. So we don't have a pixel in this image which is the integer, uh, which is a real number. We have pixel number one, pixel number two, pixel number three, and so on. We don't have that. So if you do that way, we'll have a problem, okay? Because we know we, we, we won't be able to find where which pixel to put. So therefore, um, so that's what it's saying. The image is sample it rows and so on. So what we are going to do is that um, we are going to do this other way. So instead of taking the pixel here, mapping this way, we are going to actually, we are going to loop here. We take each pixel here, say it corresponds to which pixel here. Okay, we're going to do other way. And uh, since um, <clears throat> we can do that because this equation, we actually started with this thing. So this was saying that we, if you know the x, we can find x prime. And in this one, if you know the x prime, we can find x double prime. So we can, you know, just rewrite again and actually be able to do that other way because of the equation. 
So the advantage of that will be that we don't have to um, worry about this problem because it may happen that one of the pixels here will map to some non-integer value in this image. But since we know all the integer value here, then we can do interpolation. Okay? Because this image, we know everything. We know the values, we want to transform that. This image we are actually building, we, we don't know. So therefore it's better to, if we have a pixel from here which maps to somewhere here which is not an integer value, we can do interpolation as we talk about how to do interpolation, looking at the neighboring pixel. So that's the main idea, that it's better to do, go through each of the pixel here, find the corresponding pixel using this equation here, then copy that. Next one, copy that, and so on. So that's the trick in the in the <clears throat> in the warping, and that's the only thing which you need to know. So you need to know what's the transformation, and you need to make sure that you do other way. So instead of converting x prime to x double prime and copying this uh, location, the intensity values, we will convert the in convert the integer value x double prime to x prime, and copy the other way. Okay. No, and, and that's what this is uh, telling you, which I already explained to you. Um, so, so this is the equation we are going to use. So we'll take the x double prime here, find out the corresponding x prime here. We just copy that value in this one. And if the, if we end up with uh, the non-integer value, then we can do interpolation because we know all the values. We could not have done other way because we don't know. We are warping. We are just doing this thing. We don't know. So that's a problem. Okay, so, so now um, what all that will give you is say this is the one image, this is the another image, this should be one of this should be t, not t minus one, both of them. And um, so, and this is the warp image. We warp this, we find the estimate of the transformation, we warp this image, and that's the way it looks, even though the transformation is very small. Now, the main point here is that since this there's a camera moves from here to here. So if you do the pixel by pixel difference, you will get like this, different pictures. So there's some movement, there's some differences. Now, if you find the alignment, you find the transformation and transform this image so it look like this, then when you find the difference between these, this and this, then most of the pixel will be zero because it's already you know, aligned and it should be similar. So that's the whole idea that we have kind of got rid of the global motion by estimating this transformation, okay? So, so now, you know, if you have a video like this, then you can, as you see, each picture is not capturing the whole thing. And, you know, it's like moving, and you can make a mosaic like that. Because what you are doing, each consecutive frame, you are estimating the transformation. This is a fine. And then once you have all these, you know, transformation, then you can put, to get, put them together in one, one big uh, canvas, one big mosaic, and you know you are stitching to, to, together. And and that's uh, <clears throat> the idea. Actually, new new iPhone 5 will do that for you. You know, if you do like this, and then it will make a mosaic for you. And basic idea is this one. Okay, so um, so this is another example uh, we have. This is, used to be our lab in the old building a uh, long time ago. And uh, then we can generate this mosaic together these frames and becomes like that. Um, this is the another example of this uh, volleyball and then you can make a mosaic like that. So, which is nice. And um, so, so one of the motivation of this is actually that you can do uh, video compression uh, using uh, this mosaic idea. And this mosaic is also called Sprite. So, so let's say you, know, you are watching a game uh, in, a, in a stadium. And if you think about the stadium, you know, most of things remain constant. You know, because audience, they don't move much, and they are very far from that, so you cannot see the distinction. So what the idea will be that while you first make this sprite or mosaic 
of what the game you want to transmit. And then you just um, identify the player. So player is what is going to change in this game. You know, one player, two players, and so on. So now you take this one big image, one big mosaic, you transmit, you code it, and uh, then you just uh, identify the player and you can know where this frame was taken and you can combine this with the mosaic at appropriate location and you can generate the actual image. So this image you can do MPEG coding on that and you, know, you, you, you can do all those things. But actually better way will be that since most of the background is not changing, so, and it is, you know, sometimes it's here, sometimes here, and it's uncovering the whole background. So for example, if you just have one big image, as shown here of the background, then we have a given frame in the video, and there the difference is that there's a pick, player can be in different location. So identify the player. And then you know from this which part of the, um, the audience are shown here, suppose this part, then you take this, put together and you generate the image like that. So that will be a very good compression and you can do pretty quickly. And that was the original, original motivation of this MPEG, MPEG-4, but then it went in different direction. Okay, so, so that's, that's good. Uh, so now um, we are going to talk about um, another method um, by uh, two authors, Main and Picard. Um, which actually will find this transformation uh, using the projector transformation, which is the you know homography, which is actually harder, but it's more realistic as we talk about. Um, it's harder because it's a numerator and denominator term, uh, and um, but it'll be more more accurate. Okay, so but we'll follow the kind of similar you know approach for that. So this is called projective flow. Now one thing is, and then we are going to use this equation again and again. So we have this optical flow constraint equation. And um, so we, as we have done this before, we'll write them in the matrix and the vector form. Use a vector, fx is a vector, and this is your, the projective transformation or the homography. So as you see, that x prime is given by x plus b, divided by C transpose X plus one. So if C is zero, this is like a fine. But the here difference denominator is the, they make it uh, harder. Okay? C hmm? What is C? T what? C, C, C is transpose. But C is, is one. What is C? C is a vector, which is C1, C2. And it is, it is the two by one vector so when you take two by one vector transpose is one by two, and then x is x y multiplied together, then become a scalar. So remember we have c one x plus c two y plus one in the denominator. So that is what we had, and uh, so that's called projector transformation. So this one is two by two matrix a one a a two a three a four. This is the b one b two, and this is. Uh, the C1, C2, and this X and Y. That's what we have. And then actually, it's, you know, so, so now um, the, the other way to convert this to, is a displacement model to kind of optical flow or instantaneous model is that, well, let's subtract from X prime X. So we're going to subtract X from this side also. So now optical flow model will become like that x prime minus x, this is x prime minus x. And um, so now we want to estimate this projected transformation homography in this context. So we will use exactly same formulation as we did before, that we, this is a global flow, and we are going to uh, take every pixel and every pixel has to satisfy this equation, the optical flow constant equation. U f x plus v f y plus f t should be zero, and um, it won't be exactly zero. It will be a small number. We square it. We sum it up. We want to minimize that. Okay. 
So now we know that the optical flow is given by this projective transformation, which is this one and then minus x, as we said, because the optical flow now we want to express. This was a, this was the displacement now we want to express in optical flow. That's what we had in previous equation. So then fx, fd. Now, um, so we want to simplify this, and one way to simplify this will be, but denominator always a problem. Okay. So what we take the denominator, multiply, you know, every term here. Okay and then it will become like this. So if you multiply denominator by C to C X transpose plus one, this will get rid of that. And then this term will be multiplied by the FT will multiply by this denominator. Okay. Now you have to keep in mind that while ideally this is zero and therefore this should be zero. So therefore, you know, if you multiply anything with zero, then you know you don't have to worry about that. So that's why we could do that. In, in a way, mathematically, it's not correct. It, it's approximation, but let, let's do that. So multiply with the denominator both terms here, so we get like this. Now we got rid of denominator. So so we have uh, ax plus b. We already have and minus x, now x we multiply with this denominator, then fx as it is, then we have plus ft, we multiply this denominator with the ft, okay? So, um, so now in this one, we want to estimate the c, which is c1, c2, b, which is b1, b2, and a, which is a1, a2, a3, a4. So eight unknowns, we want to estimate that. Again, this is the minimization, same kind of idea. So you have function, you want to minimize, you do differentiate the function with respect to what you want to minimize. So we want to minimize with respect to these eight unknowns, equal to zero, then you end up with linear system. So that's your homework. Um, so you will show in the homework that, that A, that eight parameters, of this projective transformation are given by this linear system. So where five, where A is this eight-dimensional vector, where five is this vector, it has these terms, fx, which is the first derivative in the x-direction, x, which is the x-coordinate of pixel, fyy and fx and all these terms, which are in terms of x, y, fx, fy, x square, y square, whatever. So this is actually similar to that A matrix we had where we had x, y terms. But here, since it's a more complicated model, we have square terms also. But this essentially is all that we can compute. We know the location, we know the x, y location of the pixel, we can compute the special derivative also. So this is eight dimensional vector. This is eight by one. And this is uh, one by eight. So this will become eight by eight matrix. And this is eight by one. And similarly, this, um, um, <clears throat> we have the, um, this is your eight by one vector again. And then these are these are your scalars because Ft is a scalar and x transpose will become multiplied by fx will become scalar because this will become one by two multiplied by two by one become one by one. So this is the special derivative, it's temporal derivative, these are just location of the pixels. So we have a very nice linear system. But linear system is eight by eight. Eight equation, eight unknowns can do that. Okay? So that's very good. Now, so, so that method is called projected weighted because we apply this weight, as you saw here, we multiply this thing and so in a way that we are going to compute, we, we are going to minimize this error but some weight here, okay? And we say, well, since it has to be very small, 
um, and ideal is zero, so we can we can multiply by any weight. It should be you know same thing. So that's the idea. Okay, so uh, that's very nice, very good. And now we are going to look into a little better. You know, we want to do not. We don't want to do weighted. You know, weighted will be not that good. Uh, that's a problem. So we want to do unweighted. And um, how do we do that? So for that, we are going to use this approximation called pseudo perspective. So, um, so again, this is your transformation, the um, homography or projector transformation. And uh, this is numerator denominator. So we are going to do the Taylor series of that, and which is also a homework problem. And so, as we said, x prime is basically x plus u and y plus v. And this is the Taylor series up to the square terms. So um, the another approximation of this, as we talked about on Tuesday, will be a bilinear, which will be Taylor series, but we'll remove some square terms, which will become here. There's no square term. So these are two different models we can use. So um, now, now it becomes simpler because now we have the you know we don't have a denominator. Of course, the model is approximation. So now, if we put in this um, model u, you know, for the u, if we put um, this model or the the pseudo perspective model, so we can actually solve this exactly same thing as we did weighted, and um, that will become like this. Again, we will end up a linear system. So we will have a vector phi and phi transpose. And then q is what we want to compute, um, which are these unknowns. And then this is a temporal derivative ft. And then phi again, the um, which we know. So the five um, will be like this. So we'll have first term will be fx xy, second term will be fx x, third term will be fx y and fx. Then we'll have fy xy, fy x, and fy y and fy. As you see, there are eight terms here all together. So it's eight by one vector. So this is a little different than what we have before in the weighted. And yeah, wait it. Which is which is this one? Um, this one. Okay, this phi is a little different, and that's what's making a difference. It's a different model. So um, so that's very good, and um, so that'll be for the bilinear, and then we can also show similarly for the pseudo perspective will be like that. So phi transpose will be fxx, fxy, fx, then fyx, fyy, and fy. And c1 will be given by x squared fx plus xy fx. And c2 will be given by xy fx plus y squared plus fy. Again, we have these eight terms. So, which means all these, you know, affine transformation, the weighted projective, pseudo perspective, bilinear, all this amounts to the um, linear system. In the affine, we have six by six system. In these, we have eight by eight. So, so then the algorithm to compute this main and Picard um, transformation between two images, which uses the um, the you know homography, is that we will estimate Q, which are these parameters using the approximate model. So we can use bilinear or we can use this pseudo perspective. And um, then the interesting part here is that we will refine that further. From the Q, we will actually find the real P, which are the eight parameters for the homography. And the way we are going to do that, we will select four points, say S1, S2, S3, S4. And we'll apply this approximate model using Q. 
and find the location of those four points from one image to other image because once we know the transformation we can take any point and find its transform version in the next image. Yes? And uh, using this correspondences of four points then we are going to actually estimate the true P. And true P is the homography and will be exactly the same as I talked to you before that we can estimate the homography if we know the points here and points here. I showed you that um, you know picture of a uh, you know some building and another picture I have these shift points, shift points or Harris points, I have the correspondences and I can estimate very simply lean least to square fit. So here we essentially are finding the approximate transformation using the approximate model of pseudo perspective or the bilinear once we know the correspondent, then we can actually fit the full projected transformation or demography. Okay, so that's the idea here. So first we estimate the Q, then we relate Q with P, and we can do this iterations if you want, you, as we've been doing in the fine also. You can do it several times. So, so, so getting back to this thing, that once we have the points in this image and corresponding point in this image, and this we are going to using the four corners in this image applying this approximate transformation we learn we know the correspondences so in one image is x y then corresponding point is x prime y prime are known we want to determine a's for the full projector transformation and which is this one so remember this uh, i told you that you know we can call these c1 c2 or we can call them uh, continue with a here we have everything is a so A1 to A8. But you remember, we have been calling these A1, A2, A3, A4, then we have been calling these translation B1, B2, and C1, C2, but you know, they are basically the same thing. So this is the projector transformation or the homography relating the X, Y with X prime, Y prime, okay? So now we will explain this a little better uh, compared to last time. So we can take this equation and um, we can multiply basically this with x prime and write it down like this. Okay, so we have x prime a7 x which is this one x prime a8 y and x prime on the left side and the right side we have the same thing a1x, a2y plus a3. Same thing, this equation we can write down, this multiplied by this, which is y prime, a7x, and so on. And then on the right side, we have this one. So the two equations, we can you know, do that. So we can also do this, that we can take the first equation, we can leave x prime here, we can bring these two terms on the right side. So now we have x prime is equal to all these three terms then minus a7 x prime x minus a8 x prime y so we can do that and we can do the same thing for y we can keep y prime here and then this minus that that's what we have so we have now two equation x prime y prime on one side and the rest is on the other side yes then we can actually do other way we can take the x prime on the right side and the whole thing on the left side, we can do that. So then we can write down like actually this. We can write down these two equation in the matrix and vector form. So we have x prime, y prime here, and we have in these two equation unknowns are these a1 to a8, and if I multiply this with the first row, I'll get the first equation. If I multiply this with the second row, I'll get this equation. Second, row, I'll get this equation. As you see, that this is multiply a1x plus a2y plus a3, which is here. Then this is all zero. Then we have minus x prime x, and then we have the <coughs> a7, and then minus y prime xi with a8, which is this one. So that's my first equation. So um, here I'm using the index i uh, because we'll have many points. For each point we have two equations. If you have n points, we'll have two n equations. 
so that's index is showing but but this you know you can ignore index right now to relate this with this is, is, is there so then as you see here you know we have a linear system again we have the matrix on the left side um, and uh, which is known x and x x y and x prime y prime is known on the right side x prime also known and this is unknown so therefore what we are going to do is we'll take four points as we talked about so each point give you two lines two rows four points will give you eight rows yes which means this matrix will become eight by eight this is the eight by one eight by one you can invert it you can find the solution Huh? So, so see, we talk about that um, we have two images, and we already estimated the bilinear transformation or pseudo perspective transfer using that method we described. Okay, this you know previously. So now, what we are going to do that we will um, take four points in the say left image. You know, just pick any four corners or something. You you can decide. So let's take first point, which is x1, y1. Since we already know this, this transformation, we can find out x1 prime, y1 prime in the next image. Similarly, we take x2 and y2. Then we find its transformation x2 prime, y2 prime. Third point, fourth point. So we know these correspondences using because we just put in the formula. So knowing that, then we will have these eight you know lines eight rows eight unknowns then we find the solution okay that's the idea so that will give us actually the true true homography because you know earlier the way we find the correspondence war approximation now but we have really fit fitted the true one and that's the idea and then you can use more points if you want. You know, if you have eight points, you just find uh, four points. If you you can find the find the inverse, uh, but if you have more points, you can do the pseudo inverse. You, know, you can put the big big matrix and and do that. So the final algorithm is that we can create a Gaussian pyramid. Uh, suppose they say three or four level, and um, we estimate the parameter p by you know. Doing this, the lowest to the uh, highest resolution, and uh, then we estimate p by applying uh, this uh, um, the relating the p with q. So as I showed you in the figure. Um, so now, if we can do that, then we can actually find a mosaic, and uh, mosaic basically is the big image which will take these different pieces, different images, and put them together in a big image, and blame them, and, you know, and um, so that it looks, you know, just that there was just one picture was taken. So you can generate high resolution images using a mosaic, you know, because uh, if you take an image of this whole thing, it will become, you know, pretty um, low, because each thing will, you know, remain very small. Um, but if you take a zoom in picture of this side, this side, this side, and you put it there, you can get a very nice high resolution image. And uh, also it will increase the field of view that we can see a big area. Um, so steps in generating mosaic, once you know how to find the transformation, and you know, this transformation now is implemented in, I, in iPhone, is doing its you know, hardware very quickly. Uh, so you take pictures, pick the reference image, Determine a transformation between frames and a you know reference image, and warp the images so that you put in the same same reference, and then you are done. So so you know there are a lot of application of the mosaics. Uh, you know you can do it in virtual environment. You can do it in computer games, movie special effects, and video compression as I showed you in sprites, and so on. So this um, um, is um, Actually, Steve Mann, you know, the author uh, who came up with this method, and he was doing PhD at MIT, and he started this thing called wearable computing a long time ago, and he used to wear these cameras and the computer, and then 
then he will move around to the, at the science the one ter time you will see a very small field of view so his idea was he wants to you know navigate with this uh, variable computing so so the motivation of this coming up with this uh, transformation you know, algorithm for computing this transformation was that that he can move around and get these small field of view but then stick to together then he can get a big mosaic and help his uh, you know navigation so so this is a sequence of images you, know, you can find the mosaic and there is this thing that if you use a fine maybe it's not a good uh, approximation but you know, when you use the actual projective thermography you get better approximation so this is uh, another example he has on the website then you can walk around and um, get a nice uh, panorama mosaic you know you go to Walmart and you know if you look at this one then you want to look at the whole big thing big field of you then you just take a video and stick together like that there was a scientific American frontier documentary I think they had which can generate this whole nice mosaic here um, then he went to a um, restaurant Chinese restaurant he eat dinner with his friends so he's sitting there and then he can see these uh, friends and he can put to them together in the mosaic so it was pretty interesting um, this is I think uh, MIT media lab uh, mosaic so now this uh, idea can also be used for analyzing the UAV videos as we have been talking about and I showed you this uh, in the beginning the first lecture so we have this system COCO um, which uh, which analyzes these videos taken from aerial uh, platform and uh, so as we said that when the camera is moving then everything will move and that's a problem so we have basically a system which does that compensate the motion to move the global motion then detect objects and then track the objects and look at you know the behavior of that and uh, so here's the example that we are finding these different frames and warping them you know they look like that and then we are incrementally building this mosaic um, then you can see these frames are being put together nicely and give you a whole because it's going through the road so it's giving you the whole road area in the same coordinate system <coughs> and so essentially uses this affine transformation which we talk about the method and actually you are going to implement this also this will be your third program and um, so there are more examples and this will work even for infrared images so IR imagery is that uh, will give you high value when it is hot and, and low value when it's cold. So these are the images which will work also at night. The visual EO, which is called electro optics images, they will only work when you have a light because light reflected and goes to the camera. So also you can see that we can build this you know, mosaic incrementally for this. Now once you can do that, get rid of the camera motion then you can detect the objects which are moving so these are the cars moving and even though everything is moving here but we are not picking up that and this new car enters here so we can do that there's a lot of motion so that's the application of this uh, the uh, motion compensation eco motion so uh, then once we have these blobs we can do tracking we can track these different cars each car has a different color so we have the right track for these cars okay so um, so I think these are the references um, so the original paper is here by Bergen and uh, this is the by main and Picard the next method I talk about this is a cocoa paper and this is another method which uh, you know also estimate the homography um, uh, but different way um, using Levenberg mock algorithm Lani optimization by Rich, Rich Zaleski this is the same uh, researcher who has a book you know you guys have that so that's it do you do you have any question we have few few minutes
Go ahead, don't, don't be shy and just ask something. The, the yeah. Point from those cars. So the point is that see you want to um, be able to analyze these videos to say that while you are doing the surveillance, you know, you want to say well how many cars are there and where the cars are coming, where they are going, and you want to keep track of, you know, the same thing when you have the cameras on the ground. Um, you want to, you know, track people and say, well, oh, there are these people, this guy came from here, he's going there, and so on. So to analyze once you have video, so you want to analyze it, you know, you want to say, well, what's happening in the video? So the basic thing you can do is say, well, let's look at, you know, what is moving. Now if, the, if you have video, if I put a camera here and just a wall, there's nothing moving. So there's no use of video. So it's a, quite same information as one image. So video is information about the motion. Now motion is either of the camera. I can have a camera, everything is static, just you know, it's move. Okay? Or it can have camera motion and object motion. And camera can be fixed, then objects are moving. Or camera can be moving and object are fix or it can both can move and camera can moving and object can moving. So when you have these physical surveillance or you know ground surveillance where the cameras are fixed, like go to the airport, go to the shopping mall and so on, the camera are fixed and they are recording the video. So uh, when some bad things happen, when they want to know, you know, there was some crime or some suspicious thing and so on. So then there'll be people will looking at the videos and say, well, everything normal, 99% normal. But then sometimes something will happen and they want to know that, well, how did it start it? You know? Say, well, oh, this guy did it, but you know, where was he before, where he came from, and so on. So that's the idea of the analyzing video and surveillance, video surveillance. So it is fixed camera. Now when you have the moving camera like a UAV, then you have same problem. So you want to, you know, watch what's happening. And the complexity here is that you have the moving camera, so you have to want to actually get rid of the camera motion as we as we did uh, in this one. And um, so then then you can detect these objects. And then you can look at, you know, you can track them, you can look at the behavior, what these uh, cars are doing, or, you know, they're taking a U-turn, or they're, you know, it's going like that, yeah. Uh, what kind of matrix transformation do you use? The affine, for all these affine transformations. And how do you do that the, uh, while the camera is moving, you are detecting just motion of the cars? Yeah, so see that what you do is um, that um, in this one, the um, most of these um, odd motion is due to due to the camera motion. The the uh, cars which are moving are very few pixels. So majority of pixels are moving because of cameras moving. So in that you know we talk about the method. We'll take these pixels, all of them. We build a linear system. We can estimate those motion parameters and then we can warp these images to get rid of the the uh, camera motion. Now we will have the um, <coughs> as it's shown here that this is stabilized. As you see that this is not moving as compared this is moving. So then when we subtract we can now we have a video that it's stable, it's not moving, but only the objects are moving. So when you subtract the, say, current frame from the next frame, the difference will be when, cam when the object car move. So the subtraction will give you big number. The places where it's not going to move will be same, zero. So that is called difference picture or background difference. We are going to talk about that, and we can identify what are changing. You see that. If, if you look at the video frames where camera is fixed, 
then you can find the pixel which are changing by just finding pixel by pixel difference you know and they'll choose oh this pixel is different because person was here then moves to here so if I take this picture and this picture find a difference I'll get a those pixels will be high difference where the person was there last time and person is now here so we'll get this so that's the main idea of finding these uh, people who are moving or cars which are moving okay so um, let's stop here and um, then next week uh, we will have um, continuation of this um, kind of um, motion estimation and so on